Hello and welcome back to Saltlock. What I want to talk about today is this super code 158 ABUS uh, combination lock. Now ABUS give us a security rating of 5 out of 10. Um, and what first drew me to this lock uh, was somebody gave it to me or uh, loaned it to me and said can you open this lock, can you decode it? So I struggled, I struggled, I tried all the various uh, pull techniques and nothing was happening. And even though when you set the right lock, so this combination is set to zero, 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 even when you set it to zero, 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 it doesn't open until you release tension on the shackle and then that opens. So that got my interest. And the other thing that got my interest was if you set this very close to the combination and then set the code, it just opens. So why was I unable to open it when I pulled on the shackle and got the right code, but the shackle opened when I released the pressure? So that absolutely fascinated me. So I really wanted to know what was going on inside this lock. So... Can this lock be decoded? Well, yes, it can. Let me just, uh, let's set this back to uh, zero, 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 and then change the combination. So to change the combination, we turn this lever around by 90 degrees and then we scramble the lock so let's do that so what I've got here is a bag so I'm going to put this lock in the bag scramble the code this so I can't see. There you go, scramble the code and then turn this lever back by 90 degrees and then scramble the code again. Right, so let's set this to zero, zero, zero just to make sure that the lock isn't been reset back to zero zero so that doesn't open and I'm going to release the shackle and it doesn't open so there you go we set the code I'll send out the rest of this in here now when I was given this or loaned this about a year and a half ago I didn't have one of these knives. So I was just trying to open this by feel. And for reasons that I'll explain later, I couldn't do it. So let's see if we can try and decode this. So we're going to put this knife in. Turn each digit. Now this is standard practice for these type of locks. No, you'll have to excuse me, I'm trying to do this through the camera, so it's a bit difficult. Uh, did you see that knife move? So let's move on to the next one. So put that in there. So the knife is almost horizontal. Sorry, vertical. And as you can see, when we find a low point, that knife moves I think that's it there and there so check that on check that on check that on oh, let's do that one there again that's that one and that's that one so You'll notice that these usually stop on half points, halfway through 
a 9 and a 0, a 7 and 8, a 5 and a 6, and a 7 and 8. So move it onto a whole number. And then let's pull shackles. So. Now, one of the things with these locks is you can't go from 0 to 1. So let's go all the way back to 1, which will be the next number on this. This should be 9. This should be 7. And this should be 9. Give it a tug. Nothing. So 2, 0, 8, 0. And it's open. And that's all there is to decode in these. So now that I've been able to decode it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the inside of it. So let me set everything back. Let, sorry, let me set everything up and I'll come back to you. Right, so I'm already uh, set up. So I just want to reiterate what first attracted me to this lock. And it was the fact that even though uh, you set the right code on padlock and pull on the shackle it won't open until you release the shackle pressure and then it just pops open so that's what fascinated me about this lock so I want to know what the mechanism was so let's see if we can pop this off So there you go, that's what's underneath the bonnet, so to speak. So what have we got? So we've got a central spindle that goes all the way down. Uh, it goes all the way down to the reset mechanism. Uh, on that central spindle, we've got this shackle bar, which prevents the shackle from opening. This is sprung loaded. We've also got the four code wheels. And in between the four code wheels, we've got these black, they're black. I'm gonna call them clutch plates, clutch wheels. Uh, we've also got this uh, plate, and this plate has got uh, one, two, three, four tongues that run from this bottom here to the top here. Um, so what happens is, uh, let's put the shackle back in. And it's the flats on these clutch wheels that operate on this tongue plate, which this pin then pushes down on this shackle bar. So if I can do that, replicate that, there you go. So now you can see that I can pull as hard as I want to on that shackle and nothing happens until I release the pressure. And when I release the pressure, that shackle bar on the left hand side will spring up. There you go. And that enables, enables me to pull the shackle out. So there's that shackle bar, and when the code is not correct, that shackle bar is in that position, and it obscures that shackle hole on the left hand side, and this shackle hole on the right hand side. So you can see that shackle bar is sprung loaded, there's a spring there, and as before. When this plate is pushed down, so it moves that shackle bar on the left hand side. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you should be able to see that. So here we've got the uh, reset mechanism. So uh, hopefully you can see the black 
clutch plates in between the wheels, the code wheels, and they become disengaged. You might be able to see it a bit closer there. Yep. See on the left hand side there? See here that this black plate is disengaged from this code wheel, and that enables us to set whatever we want to. So let's re engage that. Just to, so clutch plate disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged. So let's see if we can see a little bit more detail what's going on here. So let's take this reset mechanism off. So this is one of the code wheels and as you can see it's got teeth on the inside. Here is one of the clutch wheels. So the clutch wheel has got a flat on it. And it was this flat that I was interacting with, with my knife in the first part of the video. So this clutch plate, let me see if I can, I'm not sure if you can see that. It has, oh, there's, it has got some pips on it. I don't know if you can see, let's see if we can zoom in on this. So I don't know if you can see that ridge there. There might be one on the other side. There's a couple there there and there and they engage with those teeth on the code wheel so I hope that's given you some idea of what the mechanism looks like in this uh, padlock um, the only thing I've got to do now is uh, try and get this back together. Uh, for those who have, of you who have made it this far to the video, uh, thank you very much. Um, if you could uh, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Um, but I've just got a short message from um, the Southampton Lock Picking Club. Uh, Southampton Lock Picking Club. Um, m many of you may know uh, Tom from the club. Uh, he's having a bit of rough time at the moment. He uh, looks like he might have uh, carpal tunnel syndrome or uh, he's got, certainly got a big lump on his wrist and he's just had uh, a couple of uh, teeth extracted. So he's asked me to uh, send my regards or his regards to all of you out there who are watching and to uh, let you know that he is watching your videos. Um, he's finding it difficult to comment because of the damage to his wrist. Um, but uh, when he gets back on his feet, he'll, uh, he'll let you know. Uh, uh, once again, thank you for watching.